Hello everybody, Steve here from Steve's Garage. I'm Steve, that's Earl. Although I think Earl sometimes thinks he is Steve. Anyway, today Earl's wearing a sign that says compression. Today we're gonna to talk about compression. I've got this old Model A engine, which we'll get to in a second. And it runs really good. So with these old A's, you're like, do we take it apart and do diagnostics, try to figure out everything that's going on inside it? Or do we run it and hope that maybe it has low hours on it or low miles, I should say, and the guy before, the guy before us rebuilt it. This had fresh paint on it, which now it's all covered up with, uh, you know, overspray and stuff from me, so it doesn't look that new anymore. But this thing sat in the guy's barn for 40 years. So, that means um, that, you know, it, it may only have 20,000 miles on it. It may have less. And this is an old uh, AA farm truck. And um, they didn't go too far. These guys kind of used it around the yard, the, on the farm. They went down to get feed and grain and all that. They weren't, they weren't long hauling anything. So it may have very sh low miles on it. Uh, the oil in it, I've changed the oil and I've run the heck out of it um, and I've driven this chassis and the oil is still like honey. It's crystal clear. It doesn't leak a drop of oil, uh, doesn't leak water. It does leak some water out of the uh, water pump, which uh, I'm going to replace. But today we're going to check the compression in the heads. And if the compression is good in the heads, you know all four cylinders then i think i'm going to leave it alone just dress it up paint it you know uh take care of it and run it and then if something happens i can rebuild it later but uh if it's if it's a runner why well, go through the time expense and and all that stuff so compression and that's a piston if you're wondering that's supposed to be a spark plug but hey what the hell you know i, I never went to art college because we couldn't afford it so here we go anyway the compression in these heads runs from 45 to 75 pounds under you know under running condition so I'm gonna check them today if uh, if they're 45 or better I'm going with it if it's 45 or less then I at least have to do uh, piston rings and possibly pistons you know pull the top head off so I'm hoping for the best I've got a compression tester here hooked up in the number four cylinder and I'm gonna re um, set up so you guys can see what we're doing here and uh, we'll go from there by the way it's another beautiful day in all the western mass here we uh had some snow yesterday not too bad my uh neighbor got his four-wheeler stuck in the bushes i had to go over with my tractor and a chain to pull him out that's what good neighbors do and uh, he's a good guy so we had a lot of laughs but anyway um uh, let's move on to checking these things out and go from there. So I can leave Earl where he is and I will change the camera angle for you and we'll check this out. So I've got my battery set up temporarily here. These are positive ground, the old Model A's, all you old timers that are watching me, seeing what we're doing here, you guys know, positive ground. Today's engines are negative ground, and, uh, but it's the same principle. You have uh, uh, one side is grounded to um, metal, and the other side is your hot side, which runs your electrical system. So... We, um, I'm trying to see through the camera and talk at the same time. It's like chewing gum and walking. So that's a pretty good angle. So you can see here, I'm hooked up to this number four. This is number four. The cylinders run very simply. One, two, three, four. And they fire one, two, four, three. I don't know why they did it that way. But I don't, not that smart with it, but I'm sure I will find out eventually here. So this is my compression tester. It's on uh, zero right now. And we'll see what we got after we turn it over a few pops. All right. Let's 
So that one's running 45 on a dot. Let's see what else we get. Let's try it again. So now we're a little closer to 50, if you can see. We're just about on 50. So I, you know what? That's a good, I'm considering that good. Because 45 is your low point. And it's not lowing below 45. So if it's above, that means those rings are, are holding pretty good. And we're getting good pressure in there. So let's take this next one off. Let me get my, uh, get my metric wrench. Get it? These are not metric, by the way. I'm just having some fun with you. You don't have to shout out, hey, Steve, that thing ain't metric. It's American. We know it's American. Old Henry Ford did it. That's why I got it. I like my Ford products. Every vehicle I own is a Ford. Now, I don't have to put this plug in to check the other ones, but I'm going to put the plug in because I want to. Get this other one out. And these, by the way, for those of you who don't know, that's your spark plug wire. It's just a little piece of brass which hooks up to that point up there, which is where your uh, points come around and uh, you're firing. This is your distributor head, so as the um, rotor, rotor cap inside turns around, shoots the spark to this, whichever one's attached to here. You know, this, this is um, brass also running into here in four different directions, one, two, three, four. And, and when the rotor hits it, spark to that, that's catching the spark to your spark plug. Your spark comes out right here. Boom, blows up the gasoline. Easy, cheesy, end of story. All right, let's get this other one hooked up. I'm very anxious to know what's going on here. This is the, I had to wait on this. I needed an adapter because our uh, uh, I have a brand new compression tester here, and it doesn't do the old Ford Ford spark plugs are seven eighths of an inch. So you know they're they're making their stuff to modern sizes which are you know it's a lot smaller than seven eighths of an inch these plugs by the way were brand new because when i uh first got this motor i was all excited to run it and of course i checked all the fluids and checked the oil Everything was really clean, so I said, you know, we could probably pop this. All right, so we're going to do number two now. Give it a shot. Let's hope. That runs showing 40. If you guys can see, let's try it again. So it's like 44. So I'm hoping when this thing is hot and everything expands, it will tighten up a little bit and run it a little more pressure. That's my point. So, so far, I'm calling it good as a runner. And uh, we'll see what these last two have to say. Very exciting. That is great news. Any of you guys out there that do this stuff, you can I'm sure you can you can understand what I'm talking about because to yank this whole motor out and rebuild is just a you know, they're easy to rebuild. There's not much to these things, but I'd have to bring it up to a machine shop and have them go through everything because I'm not going to take it out and just Replace parts. We got a great guy locally here 
who uh, does anything you ask of him, uh, engine-wise. And he, I rebuilt a, a uh, flathead, and he was awesome. He took and boiled that sucker out and, uh, you know, cleaned it all up. And uh, did an amazing job. Then, of course, went, went off through the whole thing. And uh, I did all the, um, you know, he did all the mechanical, all the, all the boring and all that kind of stuff. And I did all the replacing of all the rings, pistons, all the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, all the bearings for the camshaft. I did all the, um, trying to work and talk at the same time, hard to do. And I did all the uh, valves. And we placed all the, everything that went along with the valves, the springs and the guides. And it was a great project. The only thing was pulling, they have these little clips to pull the, pull the valve guides out. And uh, they need a special tool that I could not find anywhere. But I did find a picture of it. So I took and I made that tool from scratch, just by a photograph. Um, you know, did some measuring inside the, the motor and said, well, it's got to be approximately this size. And that's all I had to go by. And I made that sucker and it worked great. I got lucky. But again, I've said it a hundred times with all this stuff. A lot of Yankee ingenuity and uh, just going for it, you know. So let's try, this is piston number two, one, two. Let's give it a shot. Now that one went right up to 50 pounds. Again, I think this motor is a good runner and I am very happy. We got one more to go. If we get the fourth one of the same, I'm gonna run this sucker. And uh, again, you, you can't lose anything because if something goes wrong, well, you have to rebuild it then. But if you don't have to rebuild it now, why well, go through the expense? And anybody can argue that with me, I don't care. But, uh, you know, we're, again, we're not, this isn't a long haul vehicle. It's staying local, going to car shows, and if something happens, I'll call AAA and say, put it on the flatbed and get it to my shop, and we'll tear it apart. Don't be afraid, people. Just do it. All right, we got one more. Will we be lucky? All right, we're on zero. We're going zero to hero. Let's, let's try it. There it is. Almost 50 pounds again. Just under, maybe 48 pounds. So on that note, I'm calling this a runner. It's gonna save me a ton of work. Um, we are gonna clean it up, replace the water pump, new, uh, new um, belt, obviously. Um, what a great day. Today is Sunday, by the way. Sunday fun day. Keep your pants on, people. So, today we talked about compression with Earl. Say hello, Earl. Nothing? That Earl's quiet. So, we were through this motor. Again, the paint looks pretty good here. I mean, it's all covered with uh, whatever here. 
a lot of my overspray. So I think this might have been rebuilt at one point, or it's just so, the miles are so low, it still has 50 pounds of compression in each head. Um, we can look inside the distributor here. This is your rotor. <clears throat> and see that? This is this is the uh, this goes down inside and turns in the motor and, and this runs your rotor cap in circles and this keeps you in time um, in the engine for the, the spark to come at the at the top dead center of the pistons to fire right when at the proper time. So and these if this is really old and worn down, these you know, will wobble and everything's, you know, there's bushings in here, brass bushings that are all worn, but this thing has, does not move one iota in each direction. So that's another sign that that is in good shape. What I may do, and all the old school guys right now are going to go, oh, but I probably will change over to a modern style plate and get rid of, there's a wire that's always a problem in here that grounds out, it wears out and uh, creates problems and uh, so they sell a modern piece and you know if you can get that stuff why not put it in I'm not, it's not 1928 anymore boys let's run some modern stuff in here and have this thing run nice so that's it for today it's Sunday the wife is out doing a little shopping and she will be back soon we're gonna have some fun today Anyway, guys, um, I think that was a great video, I'll tell you the truth. That uh, I'm just really excited that this thing is going to be a runner and not have to be rebuilt. And of course, time will tell, you know? So, time tells everything with all this stuff. Um, but again, I drove this thing just as a frame with a bus seat in it. And the motor ran great. And again, that oil is crystal clear. Uh, doesn't leak a drop. There's not one drop of oil under this engine. So in that in itself, you take these things apart. Sometimes you're not so lucky when you put them back together and uh, things leak again. Um, you know, and I'm not saying because of lack of uh, trying, I'm just saying that just sometimes you take this old thing the way it was factory put together or, or whatever, and, uh, and you just get a leak and you just can't figure it out and you don't want to take it apart two or three times again. But anyway, that's a story for another day. Compression, we had perfect day with the compression, 50 pounds ahead basically. Uh, I'm happy with that because again, when this thing heats up, all the metal expands, it's probably gonna run a little, a little higher in compression, uh, which is fine. More compression, more, uh, more explosion, and uh, you know more torque to the engine. These things are only 40 horsepower anyway. They're just a little thing. It's all gearing that runs these motors, and uh, or runs pushes your car with 40 horsepower. But they run great. Anyway, happy Sunday. Be good to your friends. Go give your girlfriend, boyfriend, or whoever a hug today, and uh, have a great day. It's Sunday. Enjoy. Love you guys. Thanks for all your support. Please share my videos and subscribe. We're doing a great project here. If you're new, go back and look at the beginning and look at the, uh, the body that we're building. This is a Speedster in the style of um, a Duesenberg. So anyway, for me and Earl, have a good day. Say goodbye, Earl. Goodbye, Earl. All right, guys. Peace.